Hi, everybody. All right, let's do another chapel. As most of you know, my name is Leo Ainsley Wadsworth the <laughs> Third. Pretty silly name, huh? I am so glad to be able to do this with you guys. This is a wonderful time, and I love sharing truth, and I love sharing stuff that will help you grow in really important ways. Today, we're going to talk about power, love, and something else. You'll see what the other thing is. There we go. So last week, Mrs. Martin shared about Joshua 1.9. Joshua 1.9 is a wonderful verse, and we're going to be talking about it in various ways throughout this year. Uh, starts off, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. What a wonderful verse, and we'll unpack it in various ways. Today, I'm going to talk about a slightly different verse that has a similar message, has some similar things to say to us. This verse was written by the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul was writing to a person that was one of his special students. He was writing to Timothy. And so in 2 Timothy 1.7, the Apostle Paul wrote, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound, a sound mind. This is a really good verse. Because it's really important for us to know when God gives us something versus something that we just find out or we, we think of on our own. When God says it, when God gives it to us, it is the absolute best thing. And it says God has not given us a spirit of fear. There is a lot to be afraid of. There are all sorts of things outside of our control. But you know what? They are not outside of God's control. They're not beyond what God can do. They're not outside of it. God has never given us a spirit of fear. There are times when fear can be a good thing. Let's say that you're playing with a ball in your front yard, and it goes out into the street. And you're starting to run and you stop right at the end of the, right at the curb because you remember what your folks have said and that's a good thing to do. And a car comes rushing by and you go, oh, I could have had a problem if I hadn't obeyed my parents. That's a good healthy fear. But being afraid in general, being afraid of things we can't control, being afraid of our lives is not from God. It is not what God gives us. God has not give us a spirit of fear. He doesn't give us this overwhelming, always pending uh, sense of doom and gloom. No way. What does he give us? Well, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. A spirit of power? Does that remind you of Joshua 1.9? It should. God has given us a spirit of power. Incredible power. Awesome. Huge power. Think of how powerful God is, and he shares that with us. The word in Greek for power is dunamis. We get the word dynamite from it. Yes, explosions. And so... God gives us the power, and he does it for a reason. God gives us power for a reason. He gives us power so that we can do what he wants us to do. He has great things for you to accomplish. And as we trust him, and as we allow his spirit to work within us, then his power in us will help us to do those fantastic things that he's planned out for us way before. So God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love. Real, 
strong love. Not just a gushy feeling, but a love that makes a real difference. Real love cares about the people that are being loved more than yourself. You want to see good things happen for the people that you care about, and you want to see them grow and develop and learn and do better and have a fantastic life. Think about that when next time someone corrects you. Let's say your teacher says, oh, I'm sorry you got that problem wrong. And you realize, oh, okay, 2 plus 2 doesn't equal 12. I thought it did, or 22. <laughs> your teacher wants you to grow. Your teacher wants you to learn. Your parents want you to grow and learn how to behave and how to act. Jesus wants you to grow and to become more like him. And so the love, the spirit of love that God gives us is strong. It's wonderful. It's mighty. And it embodies truth. It rejoices in good. So God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love. And then there's a funny little Greek word that's translated different ways in different versions of the Bible because they're trying to take one language and flip it into another. This version translates it a sound mind. It is a word that can mean calm. It can mean a well-balanced mind. It can mean a mind that has discipline, that it has self-control. It does things deliberately. God gives us the ability to be in control of ourselves, even. To do the right things and to not do the bad things. God gives us those abilities. He gives us the power to do it. In love, he gives us people who are helping us to do it. And he helps us love others in the same way. And indeed, God gives us a sound mind that is calm and rational and balanced and disciplined and mature, able to do the right things. Because God knows that that's the best life for you. He wants you to have a fantastic life, to have what's called an abundant life, a big, fruitful life. And think about fruit for a second. If you have a tree in your backyard, let's say you have an orange tree in your backyard, Will it produce oranges if it's not doing very well? If it's not getting the water it needs or the life it needs? No, it won't. It'll die. Or it'll just be kind of scrawny. But fruit in our lives is when we get everything we need and the excess life is poured out as fruit. And so as we have excess in our life, that we're, because we've learn the truth and we're listening to God's word and we're praying to him and we're understanding him and we're having that beautiful relationship with him because of what he has done. Then we have this fruit in our lives and we get the power and the love and the sound mind. So that's what I pray for you guys, that you would have that abundant, wonderful life and that you will grow in him. Thanks a lot.